Let's talk Trey Lance's development. Has there been any? Will it happen? I'm excited for the idea of it. What have you seen? So Rich Eisen was on his show talking about this hot seat idea for Kyle Shanahan. Is there, in fact, any heat underneath the seat of the great Kyle Shanahan? And he was indignant when asked yeah. if there should be heat underneath the seat of, of Coach <laughs> Shanahan. He said, and I quote, he's one of the sharpest minds in football. Thanks, Rich. I agree with that. I agree with that. Okay. He'd be on the street for three minutes. Also probably true. But then he went on to say, what coach would you hire that would pair up better with Lance? He's uh -huh. perfect for the situation. And that begs the question, what evidence do we have that Kyle Shanahan has successfully developed a rookie quarterback? None. 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 So no, I, went, quick, I just want to say real quick before we move on from Rich Eisen. Can we just remember that Rich Eisen was the dude who came out last year really um, indignantly again after free agency? I want to, it was before the season. Someone on uh, Yahoo, Frank Schwab, said the Niners had like the worst, one of the, or the one of the losers of the offseason. So it was right before they went six and 10. Rich Eisen just really ridiculed the writers. Who is this guy? And then he went on to have a very condescending, um, arrogant, rant about how the Niners had the best offseason in the league just by keeping themselves together and adding Trent Williams. Of course, he was wrong, but I think it's important to remember that, to remember that fact and see a pattern that maybe, maybe, maybe he knows Kyle. You know, may, may, maybe, maybe this is like a, a friend helping a friend out because he's done it before and been wrong. Perhaps a bit of a, an apologist. I just, you got to remember that Rich Eisen was big in the 90s uh, when I was a kid. And, and Kyle Shanahan's dad was big in the 90s winning championships. So I'm sure these people know each other pretty well. And the fact that Rich is just so in Kyle Shanahan's corner right now when really no one else in the world is makes me kind of wonder, think that there's probably like a three degrees of Kevin Bacon going on here. It makes sense that the, the puzzle pieces fit. The timeline. So take it with a grain of salt when Rich Eisen comes out. He's like really bigging up a friend, I would think. Yeah. I, I mean, the, there was emotion in his answer. I will say that. There was very There was clear emotion last emotion. year when he was talking about Frank Schwab. It's like, dude, it's not your brother. It's not your and son. There were no facts that he spit out no. in his argument. It was purely emotion. just indignance at yeah. how dare you question this. I don't even need to to warrant this is it with, stupid. with right. I don't even need to respond because it's yeah. so far out in left field. But going back through the numbers, so I wanted to drag back through a uh, shout out to East Bay Chris for uh, for the Rob Shoe comment. Shout out, shout out. Shout out. I wanted to go back through his career and look at it and and actually examine what type of development Kyle has provided for his quarterback. That's so I went back. That's the most important thing here. That was a little digression. Sorry about that. A, a little yeah. digression, but yeah. we get back to the topic we eventually. That's what we do. That's what we do. We're great. So we, so we go back to 2007 when Coach Shanahan joins the Texans. Right. He's the quarterback coach in his second year with the Texans, 2007. His quarterback is Matt Schaub. So we look at the development of Matt Schaub going for the next three years, 2007, when Kyle Shanahan is the quarterback's coach, 2008 and 2009, where he's the offensive coordinator. And you actually do see some progression here. You sure. see 2,200 uh, yards his first season, nine touchdowns, nine interceptions. Not spectacular. His second season under Kyle Shanahan, first year as an offensive coordinator, bumps up to 3,000-yard passing season, 15 touchdowns, 10 interceptions, then takes the next step in 2009 with 4,700 yards, 29 touchdowns, and 15 interceptions. So this is actual progression, but what we're talking about with Matt Schaub is not a rookie quarterback. He had played his first three seasons with the Atlanta Falcons, and this was the fourth year for him. Right. This period was when he was 26 to 28. And I think what we've seen with Kyle, and you were going to get into the whole future of him, but right. what he does best is take a vet like Schaub or Matt Ryan and put a good system around him. Right. You know, I'll give you a running game. I'll give you a play action passing game. So it's not all on you and I'll make life easier for you. But those guys were already developed when Kyle didn't have to develop them and work on their on their reads or their mechanics or anything other than, OK, you're a fully formed NFL quarterback. Now, here's a good system to complement you. 
Right. Here's the greatest system that I've concocted that yes. will make you successful if yep. only you listen to me and do the things that I've instructed and you to do. And it's not going to look good the first year. Right. It may not look good the second year, but eventually it'll look very good. It will. As soon as yeah. you master my system, right. it will look great. And so don't fast forward. In the meantime, in between time. Yeah. Kyle then obviously leaves uh, the Texans to join Papa Shanahan in 2010. And for the first year, I think we can just sort of write it off. We'll talk about it because it's it's who his quarterbacks were, but it's it's sort of irrelevant to the conversation. He has Donovan McNabb for a single year and a few games with Rex Grossman. So 3,400 yards, 14 touchdowns, 15 picks for Donovan. He's at the tail end of his career. First first uh, uh, season there, I believe, in uh, Shanahan's system, right? Just a so, totally wasted first year in Washington. That's good. kind of like the, the first year with the Niners. Interesting. All right. Yeah, a, a bridge to... Rex Grossman and John Beck in the second year. A bridge to nowhere. Okay. Yeah, a, a, a bridge to an island that you don't want to be on with Rex Grossman and John Beck. So 2011, Kyle Shanahan's second year with his dad, 3,100 yards, 16 touchdowns, 20 interceptions for Rex Grossman, 858 yards, two touchdowns, four picks for John Beck. So neither one of them lighting the world that on was fire. year two? Year two. Oh my God. Wow. Wow. Amazing that they could waste that much time. Wow. It, I mean, you, when you devote Whoa. yourself to, to Rex Grossman, that's that's the type of returns you go and get. And John Beck. You know, I think I remember covering a game in 2011 in Washington that John Beck freaking started. I think the Niners won like 19-7. to 7. I don't know. I, I, I think I actually saw John Beck play in person, and um, I tried to – I think I did. It's not a great time. And I think people were playing him up as if within the Shanahan system, he was going to have success, that there were glimmers of hope they that John like Beck might be the future. They like him. Yeah, solid. He was the original He was the original Nick Mullins. He, <laughs> taking us back Sorry. in time. Hey, man, if, if, if Trey and Jimmy can't play this weekend, they might need to get Mullins. All right, sorry, that's another digression. Let's come back. Let's come back. Bring Stay it on back. Top. Bring it back. Bring it back. So flash forward, 2012, here we go. Finally, something relevant to the conversation. Robert Griffin III arrives in Washington along with his cohort, Kirk Cousins. So, <laughs> Do, the, the two of them, yeah. Yes. And remember, so, we knew the way this happened was the owner said draft RG3. You must. Kyle, young, precocious Kyle, he's probably in his 20s at this point, says no. Kirk freaking Cousins is better. And everyone's like, what? What are you talking about? And he's like, no, I'm serious. We're going to take both. Just let me take my guy. So right off the bat, he's given a real vote of confidence to RG3. We really yeah. don't like you. And I like you so much. Wants you, and I'm going to coach you in spite of him. And I'm going to run you into the ground, which he proceeds yeah. to do. Yeah. 2012, 3,200 yards, 20 touchdowns, five picks, 65% completion percentage. I mean, a hell of a rookie season for Robert Griffin III. Yeah. And we see what that season of running the football does to his career. He was better that year career. than Russell Wilson was. He was a good player that year. Yes. He was. But again, another instance of a really talented individual coming in, yeah. you have to question what level of that success was Robert Griffin just being a wildly talented individual and what level was Shanahan developing his young player? Right, because with Gr Griffin, it wasn't like, look, we're going to use you in our offense. It was like, all right, well... <laughs> You're this other kind of quarterback that we didn't want, but we're so good. So we're going to just build a whole new offense. And basically they went with a college spread style offense. He ran a bunch. He got hurt. Uh, another guy who didn't slide. Um, so, no. so, and I think what we're seeing is not, not to jump the gun here, but that's what we saw with Lance this week. We didn't, yes, they didn't put Lance into their offense. They're like, you, we have to do something totally different. And it's different than what they did with, with the RG three. I think Kyle looks at Lance as a different type of person a different type of quarterback, different type of athlete, not quite as fast, bigger. So we're going to use you as a freaking battering ram between the tackles. 
Sorry, keep going. No, almost more concerning with the way in which it appears Kyle views Lance to be, because with Robert Griffin III, it, it, at least it was more often he was in space, whereas in the with these yeah. runs into the, the heart of the defense, Lance is taking brutal shots. It, That's what running backs are for. What? Yes. You don't need Lance to get you four yards between the tackles. What? No. 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 You run that stuff on the two-yard line when he can cross the goal line and not get hit. You don't run that at midfield so you can maybe get five yards while he takes seven hits come on yep come on so 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 year two for robert griffin the third and kirk cousins not much progression you didn't see them take that next step 3200 yeah, yards again for robert griffin the third but 16 touchdowns 12 picks so much much closer to that one-to-one -one ratio drops down from a 65 completion percentage down to a 60 kirk cousins takes a real tumble in completion percentage, dropping from 68% in 2012 to 52% in 2013. Only throws for 850 yards, four touchdowns, seven picks. People always talk about Kirk Cousins as a player that Shanahan loved, coveted, drafted, and developed. Kirk Cousins did not have a good season until his second year with Sean McVay. Right. That's right. That's right. Good to remember that. So it, it, and at this point, Kyle was over in Cleveland working with, well, basically electing not to work with Johnny Manziel and focusing his time and effort on Brian Hoyer. Yes. Choosing yeah. not to play Johnny Manziel. So right. that that's what happens in 2014. He takes over the offensive coordinator position with the Browns one year with Hoyer and Johnny Manziel. He doesn't appear to have helped develop poor Johnny. In now, the maybe there was nothing you could do for Johnny. No, but, he had his own issues. Yeah, I'm he not going to fault Kyle for that. Not at all. Sure. Yeah, not at all. But then flash yeah. forward, Atlanta Falcons, 15 and 16, comes in to Matt Ryan, who is not a rookie, but in his eighth year as an NFL vet. I think he's Matt, been to, to, to Pro Bowls already. If I'm been to Pro Bowls. A, a consistent 4,000-yard passer oh, yeah. from 2011 on. So yeah. he already has four seasons above 4,000 yards passing. He's a hell of a passing. quarterback. Yeah. Hell of a quarterback. Your dad's not so fond of him. I think he believed. I think was, he turned him so a, a loser. What? What? <laughs> but it's so I mean, random. We all I have our own feelings about Matt Ryan. I certainly don't. Yes. So 2015, he comes in and and it's a pretty good year. 4,600 passing yards, 21 TDs, 16 interceptions, and there's no doubt that he takes the next step in 2016. Close to 5,000 passing yards, 38 touchdowns, only seven picks, drastically cutting down on that TD to interception ratio, increasing the average yards by, per throw by almost two yards from yep. about seven and a half to 9.3. So yep. credit to Shanahan in that year. He did develop Matt Ryan. But again, back to the idea, it's not a rookie quarterback. He developed Matt Ryan. He just improved the offense around him. Yes. He improved the offense around him. He put a good system around him, and it's a very complicated system that takes hell long for people to get down, but they did. But give 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 some uh, credit to Matt Ryan too, and, the, and those players, and I had some good players. And I had Julio Indeed. Jones. You know, everyone writes off Sean McVay like, hey, you know, he was really good those first couple of years, but he had Todd Gurley. You know, he went to the Super Bowl. He had Todd. Kyle had Julio freaking Jones. So yeah, I mean, they put, they put a little. They got Tevin Coleman and Austin Hooper, and they they put some nice pieces around them but the, the core was in place yes it's a good spot for him to be in yes he he merely came in and maximized a player who you could argue is is one of the most much like McGlinchey he, he comes into the room and, and you say wow he could be the CEO of a company right Kyle seems to love that type of a personality and I think that that's the type of individual he can be very hard on he can provide his very honest and, and direct and and sometimes negative coaching to these individuals and, and they're older and more mature and, and more able to receive that criticism right um it can have an effect it, it can be effective but from what I heard or for what's been reported the relationship was quite strained at the end after two years between Ryan and Shanahan. And after that Super Bowl, and they lost, Ryan said, said on the record, well, the, the calls were coming in late. You know, I'd like, of course, I would have liked to change some of those passes to runs, but the calls were coming in late. And Kyle was like, well, you didn't need to take those sacks. <laughs> so I'm just saying, Kyle, you know, it, 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 I don't know how, <laughs> I don't know if his style works with a, with even a guy like Matt Ryan long-term because the, the, the evidence wasn't there. He left. It's not there. And the final chapter is obviously 2017. Kyle comes over to the 49ers, 
2017, Bobby Ho Hoyer, CJ Beathard, Jimmy G. You, you can forget about Bobby Hoyer because literally the 49ers did. If you go to their website and look Bobby at the stats Hoyer? for 2017, he's not Brian there. Hoyer. Who is Bobby, Bobby Hoyer? Hoyer? He's not listed. You had to Who go to Bobby ESPN Hoyer? if you want to see Brian Hoyer. Brian, Brian. Is there a Bobby Hoyer? There's got to be a Bobby Hoyer. No, no. no. There, I mean, there probably is, but I, I'm thinking of Brian Hoyer. Uh, okay. If well, that's too he, bad. We wanted to call him Bobby from now on. I mean, literally, you can forget about him because I've already forgotten his yeah, name. The out. 49ers forgot about him because they didn't put him on their website. The stats are not there. You have to go to <laughs> ESPN to see him. It didn't happen. The Bobby Hoyer era in San Francisco it, never happened. It only lists C.J. Beathard and Jimmy G. Ooh. There is no Brian Hoyer or Bobby Hoyer for or that Hoyer. matter. Maybe you searched for Bobby and you, got, you couldn't find him. <laughs> Probably. Probably typed in. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Bobby. All right, Bobby. So, I mean, if you look at, at CJ, I mean, I guess you could argue that there was some progression there, right? 2017, 1,400 yards, four touchdowns, six interceptions, 55% completion so percentage. so much that they let him walk in, undraft, in, un, in unrestricted free agency. They're like, uh, goodbye. We're yeah. signing Nate Sudfeld. We see potential, so you should go uh, uh, take that potential to someone else. Yeah. It's like at the end of Dumb and Dumber, they're like, hey, we're looking for a couple of guys to join our troop bus. Oh, right down that way. Exactly. Are you yeah. in luck? Yeah, absolutely. That's it. Yeah. So yeah. I guess this is 20 minutes of us saying, maybe this isn't the best place for Trey Lance to be. It, it really, really doesn't seem to be. I mean, when you look at Nick Mullins, I, I don't think that you can point to anything. You, you see a maximization of the skill set within the system, but you don't see any clear progression from one year to the next. His best start was his first start. Yes. It was. It was. The statistics around how wild he was within his first 13 starts are phenomenal, but yeah. that's because he came out of the gate. Yeah. Going gangbusters, never really took it to the next level. That's true. Um, so uh, is Trey Lance in the right spot for his development? Not based on history and evidence and all that stuff, but Kyle, you're still, you know, like 41 or whatever, and you've never had a you've never had a talent like this. And I always want to say something like it's clear that Kyle doesn't want Trey to really be the starter this year. And I don't know why. There's a lot of but let's give Kyle the benefit of the doubt and think that he has the best interest in Trey at heart and is thinking, you know what? I, I just want Trey to play next year. And there's so much right. I can teach him on the bench this year. I don't want him to go out there and look bad. And make everyone because I don't want him to lose confidence. I like let's let's just hope that that's what he's thinking. So that's why when Trey starts against the Cardinals, he's like, "Well, I'm just going to use you in a different offense." So you, there's no pressure for like before the game started. There was a report he can't even win the job. And then you look at how they used him. Well, we're not going to let you run play action. We're not going to let you be on our offense. It's just something else. So it, I think it's clear that Kyle maybe maybe Kyle has a long view here. And he's like, next year, you'll be ready to run my offense. But I don't want anyone pressuring me to, to, to speed up the process. You need to age in, in an oak barrel for 12 months. Yeah, he must agree with Rich Eisen that there is zero heat to his seat. Yeah, like, I'm going to be here next year. Lance is going to be my quarterback. This is how I'm going to prepare him. And, you know, Kyle's not always right, but this is how he feels. That he, it's going to go, and maybe he's right on this one. I mean, to his credit, Harbaugh did put – Kaepernick on the bench for a year and a half. And he was like four years older than him. Right. Than and yeah. I, I do not think that Kyle is doing anything to tank the season or, you know, anything malicious. I do believe that he's doing what he thinks is correct to win the maximum number of games this year to try and, and get to into develop the playoffs. Lance. I'm going to give him that benefit of the doubt. And okay, to try and maximize the career of Trey Lance. Yeah. And when he I does believe... play, it's like, all right, well, like, again, like, I think what he's afraid of is he plays him in, his offense right he plays well and now he's forced to play lance the rest of the year when he's decided the best thing for lance is to be is to slow play it because if you just put lance out there in your offense there's a chance he nails it and looks great but if you just have him run quarterback power all day what's he gonna how what could he possibly do right to, to, to win the job right and if he doesn't nail it this team is made up of an, enough veterans on one-year deals or expiring contracts that you have to wonder if at some point you begin to lose the locker room if you're punting and and playing for next year right you have yeah. a large percentage of players that came back with the understanding that we were competing for a super bowl uh, yeah i so look may, maybe there's development going on behind closed doors in the in on pra in the practice field and all that but uh 
it's discouraging to see them pretty much punt the season on Lance. Uh, he's going to be our scout team quarterback. When we play, he's going to be Tim Tebow. And next year, he's going to be a totally different person. We're going to use him differently. He's going to be different. He better be, Kyle, because if he's not and he looks like, you know, a rookie next year, then it's going to be so easy to go back. Well, you wasted his rookie year, Kyle. Why did you do this? And then you'll really be on the hot seat if you still have a job. Yes, I, I, I can't imagine anyone, even Rich Eisen, not believing that Kyle would be on the hot seat next season if we fail to see a winning season this year and fail to see development of Trey Lance. You, you have to imagine. That's that that, that's fireable seat. right there. That's that that's a uh, you know a, a double whammy you can't take.